Hello, I'm Dr. Harper. Uh, this video is an operations management aggregate planning homework video. This is plan number two, which is chase demand, which is build on plan one, which is level capacity. So let's bring up uh, the uh, homework problem. Okay, and as we did before, uh, these numbers will be probably different than yours, but the process is the same and the procedure is the same. So we start with this aggregate planning uh, homework problem that we did last time. We pulled these numbers down and we did the level plan. So this video is doing the second plan, which is a chase demand. Don begins the meeting by presenting and discussing your solution and analysis tables of a level plan strategy, since your tables were well designed and clearly presented. Thank you. Uh, the discussion continues with Glenda. We are familiar with the level approach, but maybe the first thing we should consider is a plan based on a chase demand strategy to see if the costs are lower. Don replies, we considered that years ago and it seemed too expensive at the time because we estimated the cost to hire one FTE and to fire one FTE to be too large. Roger quickly interjects, yes, we could consider a chase plan. You know, for this problem and all aggregate planning problems for that matter, a chase plan will always produce lower inventory levels and thus lower inventory carrying costs. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. Glenda, turning to Don, continues with her line of thinking. You said it seemed. Did you actually calculate the cost of a pure chase uh, demand aggregate plan? Don slowly responds, no, it just seemed too expensive because the unit cost seemed high. Roger adds authoritatively, that will always be true. For this problem and all aggregate planning problems, a chase plan will never have lower labor costs of hiring and firing than a level plan. Maybe that's true. After a pause, Don asks you to include the analysis of a chase demand strategy. Include because you had done the level the level of capacity before, and bring your results to our next meeting. After more discussion, Don adjourns the meeting with a consensus from the committee that we have a good start. After consulting with Don. The unit cost to hire one FTE was estimated to be $2,400, and the unit cost to fire one FTE was estimated to be $2,100. You retire to your office and prepare a comparison table for a level and chase plan. You prepare a clear presentation of the tables to be handed out to the committee for the next meeting. And there it is, and so let's generate these values uh, with Excel again. So let's bring up Excel. And in Excel, I'm going to go back to the level capacity with the values. We've already done that. And so uh, let's come down here and name this sheet, rename, uh, just an LC for level capacity. And then we click it again, control left, uh, click and drag. And let's just call this one, rename this one, uh, chase demand, just the CD for chase demand. So this is going to be our chase demand. Okay, now uh, we know that um, the chase demand CD production plan very simply is just going to equal the, uh, the demand because it's going to chase it. So let's copy that down and there's our chase demand plan. Okay, uh, so therefore the production for month, month one is 2800 good. Um, the total annual hiring cost plus the total annual firing cost is approximately, okay, we need to get the hiring and firing cost. And here is where, here is where the, uh, these estimated co unit cost to hire and fire come in. So let's bring that in. Uh, let's uh, control plus, plus, plus. Okay, so right here. Uh, let's add the, the hiring and firing. Uh, let's say this is going to be the hiring cost equals, and that's going to be 2400 And this is the firing cost equals, this is 2100 And this is dollars 
uh, per FTE, and this is dollars per FTE. Okay, very good. Okay, well now we have to, let's come down here. So now we have the FTEs, but now we have to add some columns here, plus, plus, for higher and fire. So let's do the higher, let's do the fire. Okay, now, now we have our if statements in here. Now the higher equals if, uh, you're gonna hire if the FTE in the month before, which is down here, if that is less than the current month, which means you've gone up, you're gonna hire. So that is gonna equal the higher minus the lower, otherwise it's zero. Okay, we gotta do it again here. If uh, this is greater than the one before, then we're gonna take that, whoops, we're gonna take that minus the one before or make it zero. And that's gonna be the higher. Now the fire is just the opposite. In other words, if uh, the current one if the current one is lower than the previous one, okay, if you went down, then you're gonna fire, okay? If this one is lower, then you take the one that's higher minus the one that's lower, otherwise it's zero. Likewise, we do it again, if the current one is less than the previous one, okay, then we take that minus that, otherwise it's zero. And we can just copy this down and uh, see, this looks, yep, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. I think they think that's gonna work. That looks good. Okay, then we can sum this over here, bing, bing. Okay, but now we don't want, now we have, um, oh, well, the same thing. Uh, this is gonna be 720, but now we have a unit cost of hiring, which is 2400, and a unit cost of firing, which is 2100. So now we can take, because this times this, and we just copy this over too and then just zero these out. We don't need that. Okay, and now the total is gonna equal this, plus this, plus this, plus this, but they're asking for these two, equals this plus this, okay? We don't need the decimals in there, so let's bring this back up here and bring this down. Okay, and uh, actually these, all these can be maybe to three decimals that's good enough. Okay, now let's see what we have here. Okay, now this says the total annual hiring together is 83077, 83077, good. Uh, the total annual in inventory carrying cost is 36540, yep, we have it right there. And the total annual cost is 2975677. Two nine seven five six seven seven. So we have them all. So this is going to be our chase demand. Okay, and so we've done it. Okay, uh, discussion. Since Don and Glinda began the discussion with level and chase plans, what situations would lead to the following reasons? In other words, why why would you? What's a good reason to start with level and chase? Well, first of all, level and chase are easy to calculate. In other words, it's so it's it's easy. Start with the easy ones first, and then move to the harder ones. Uh, since they're easy to calculate, it's a very good place to start to have something on the board and something in the books. Number two, the level and chase approaches are easy to understand. It's easy to understand because you're levelizing this, you're you're levelizing that, and so one's equal, one's level. It's easy to understand what's happening. Uh, number three. 
The level and chase strategies can provide the most beneficial comparison with other plans. For example, your level will control your, your labor. The chase will control your inventory. And so since you have maximum control over labor and inventory, from there you can relax that and see and compare with other plans. So here is an approach uh, with level and chase uh, that is very good. Okay, that doesn't mean this is what you're doing. It's a good place to start to move to what's going to work for you, which is going to be different with every company. So that's all I have for this. Uh, for the chase demand, plan number two. I hope this helps. Uh, this is plan two of four. Plan one is level, two is chase. I'll do three and four in another video. That's all I have for this one. Between now and the next time I see you, uh, I want to urge everyone to, to be safe and take care.